Hi guys, welcome or welcome back to my channel. In this video, we will see part 1 of combinations. In my previous video, we have seen permutations. So if you haven't watched that, there is a link in the description box below. You can check that out. So before going to the definition of combinations, first let's see how this combination is different from permutations. So we all know what are permutations. So permutation is nothing but it's an arrangement of different objects in a definite order. Right? Let's say we have three letters. A, B and C. So now you have to make a two letter word out of these three letters. So how and all we can make? We have AB, AC, BA, BC, CA and CB. Right? So we have how many? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So 6 arrangements. Taking two letters at a time. So this is permutations. Here if you see AB is different from BA. Correct? This is different word and this is a different word. So they are different. Wherein if I talk about combinations, let's say we have letters A, B and C. Now you have to tell me in how many selection or combination of letters you can make out of A, B, C taking two letters. So how many combinations you can make? One combination is A, B. Right? And we have next is AC. We have BA. Whether BA is another combination? It's not. Why? Because this is a combination of A and B itself. We already wrote that A and B. Right? So this is not included. So the next combination can be BC. Can CB be another combination? No. Why? Because we have already written BC. Which is nothing but CB, right? This is a combination of C and B. So how many combination is possible? So three combinations. So this is how this combination is different from permutations. We got six arrangements, six permutation in this case. Whereas combination we have three, right? So now let's read the definition. So combination is nothing but the selection of number of objects. This is a selection of number of objects where each selection is a combination of Three objects taken two at a time. Agreed? So I repeat, combination is nothing but selection of number of objects. So we are selecting number of objects. Each selection is called combination of three objects taken two at a time. So each selection is a combination of three objects. We are taken two at a time. So in this case we have taken AB, AC and BC. Right? So, which we can also find by using formula ncr is equal to n factorial by n factorial into n minus r factorial. Which means total number of ways you can select r objects from n different objects. So, that is given by n factorial by r factorial into n minus r factorial. So, I hope this is clear. Now, let me give one more example. Let's see how many arrangements you can do and how many selections we can do. Alright. So let's take we have object A, B, C. First let me erase this. So let's say we have A, B, C. Three different objects. Here we have letters A, B, C. So now you have to make a three letter word. So let's see how many arrangements you can make. Which is nothing but permutations, right? So by taking three all the three letters. So the first arrangement would be A, B, C. So next you can write A, C, B. B, C, A. B, A, C. C, A, B. C, B, A. So how many arrangements we can write? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 6 ways. Of arrangements right so here permutation is 6 
Now let's see what will be the combination. Here also we have three letters A, B, C. Now you have to see how many combination of letters you can make out of A, B, C taking three letters. So how many combinations you can make? A, B, C. Only one combination, right? If I write B, C, A, here also it's a combination of A, B, C. So this is not possible. So only one combination, right? So the combination is 1. So the combination says, it's a selection of number of objects. In each selection, it's a combination of three objects taken three at a time. In this case, we are taking three at a time. So how many combinations is possible? Only one. Now let's see some standard results of combinations. But before that, pause the video and note this down. So now we know what is NCR. So NCR is given by N factorial by R factorial into N minus R factorial. So here NCR means total number of ways to select R objects from N different objects. Right? Now let's see what is NCN. Simply substitute R is equal to N in this equation. So we have N factorial divided by R here is N. So N factorial into N minus n factorial right so this will give you this and this is gone so 1 by n minus n is 0 so 0 factorial is 1 which implies n c n is equal to 1 similarly let's see what is n c 0 so nc0 is nothing but substitute r is equal to 0. So n factorial by r is 0. So 0 factorial into n minus 0 factorial. So here n factorial by 0 factorial is 1 into n minus 0 is n. So n factorial. So this and this is gone. We are left with 1. So therefore nc0 is also equal to 1. So make a note of this and this. Now let's move to theorems. So theorem 1 says NPR is equal to NCR into R factorial. Where R must be greater than 0 but less than or equal to N. We have to prove this. For that let's take LHS. So what is LHS? NPR. Which is nothing but N factorial by N minus R factorial. Now let's take RHS. What is in the RHS? We have NCR into R factorial. Now what is R NCR? So N factorial by R factorial into N minus R factorial into this R factorial. So this and this is gone. We are left with N factorial by N minus R factorial. So if you see N these two are equal right? So if I take this as 1 and this equation has 2 from 1 and 2 we can say LHS is equal to RHS so therefore this equation is right hence the proof now let's move to theorem 2 so now let's see theorem 2 where it says NCR is equal to NC N minus R where R is greater than 0 but less than or equal to N so first let's take LHS so we have NCR we know NCR is nothing but N factorial by R factorial into N minus R factorial. Now what is RHS? We have NC N minus R. So let's substitute R as N minus R. So N factorial by R is N minus R factorial into N minus R. N minus R, right? So this factorial. So we have N factorial by n minus r factorial into n minus n. So plus n and minus n is gone. We have minus r. So minus of minus is plus. So r factorial. So from 1 and 2, you can say LHS is equal to RHS. Hence the proof. So now let's see theorem 3 where it says 
एनसीआर प्लस एन सी आर माइनस वन इज इक्वल टू एन प्लस वन सी आर सो वॉट इज एल एच एस सो वी हैव एन सी आर प्लस एन सी आर माइनस वन सो वी नो वॉट इज एन सी आर एन फैक्टोरियल बाय आर फैक्टोरियल इन टू एन माइनस आर फैक्टोरियल एंड वॉट इज एन सी आर माइनस वन सो एन फैक्टोरियल बाय R here is R minus one, so R minus one factorial into n minus R is R minus one factorial. So let me simplify this. So we have n factorial by R factorial into n minus R factorial plus n factorial by here we have R minus one factorial into n minus R. n minus r minus of minus is plus one factorial, right? So this implies. Now how you can add these two terms? In order to add, we have to make their denominator same, right? That means we have to take LCM. So here, if you see r factorial and this side, we have r minus one factorial. Now what is r factorial? So r factorial we know r into r minus one factorial, right? That means this r factorial has r minus one in it, right? Whereas this r minus one factorial, this r is missing, right? So for this we have to multiply by r. Correct? For this term we have to multiply by r. Now let's move to the second term. Here, if you see, we have n minus r factorial, and this side we have n minus r plus one factorial. Now what is n minus r plus one factorial? So that is n minus r plus one into n minus r plus one minus one, right? This factorial. So this and this is gone. We are left with n minus r factorial. So we in this term we have n minus r factorial, but this is missing, correct? N minus r plus one. So to this I should multiply by n minus r plus one. Here n minus r plus one the factorial is n minus r plus one into n minus r factorial. So that means this already has n minus r factorial inside. I hope you are getting my point. So that means I can write this denominator as r factorial. When I multiply this to this, here also you get r right. So this will be r factorial. so both the denominator has got r factorial and when i multiply this term to this this will give you this one right so that means n minus r plus 1 factorial when i multiply this to this so the numerator will be what n factorial into i should multiply to the both numerator and denominator so that will be n minus r plus 1 plus to this i should multiply by r so that means n factorial into r so this implies i can keep n factorial by r factorial into n minus r plus 1 factorial outside right so here what we are left with so we have n minus r plus 1 and r correct So here, if you see minus r and plus r, so this and this is gone. Here we have n plus one. So let me continue here. So we have n factorial into n plus one divided by r factorial into n minus r plus one factorial. So what is will be the numerator? Can I write this as n plus one factorial? So divide by here we have r factorial into n plus one minus r factorial. I just shifted this plus one here. So this is your n, right? This is your n. So how what I can write here? This is nothing but n plus one c. R. Correct. This is your n. So, which is nothing but 
R H S. Hence the proof. I hope it is clear. So one more point to remember: whenever you have, like, for example, five factorial, what we are doing here? Five into four factorial. That means we are minusing one, right? We are subtracting one and writing their factorial. If I write n means n factorial means n into n minus one factorial, right? Same thing I applied here. So this is it in this video. We will continue this in the next part. So see you soon. Till then, take care. Almighty bless. Oh, 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 oh,